Hello everybody, welcome back to Coombe Valley Campus. Today we're going to be showing you how to fit this wiring loom into your camper van. If you own a VW Type 25 or T3 or Vanagon or whatever you call this type of vehicle, you will know that the headlights are poor at best. They look like candlelights or lanterns or whatever it may be, however you may refer to them, the headlights are pretty dire. Now what we're going to show you today is a headlight wiring loom that's designed to give you a full 12.5 volts or whatever your battery is reading at the headlight bulbs. And that is the problem with these. You will find that you will get a one, maybe two volt decrease or droppage at the actual headlight bulb itself. We have done a previous video to this featuring a Volkswagen T4 van and it uses a very similar kit to this for the same reason. They don't get the voltage at the bulbs that is necessary to give you a very, very well lit road. These kits in particular are available from campervanculture.com and the link for that product is in the description below. So go and check that out if you do want to buy this. And what I wanted to have a quick chat with you about is how this system works. Now, the existing wiring on the vehicle um, is included in the entire vehicle loom. Now, we've got a separate loom here which is taking a live feed directly from the battery of the vehicle and feeds it to the headlamps directly via a series of relays or a relay per dipped beam and a relay per full beam. It's a very, very simple kit to fit. There are only five connections. There are two of these kits available and that is for a petrol T3 and a diesel T3. Now, as you may or may not know, the battery for a petrol T3 is under the driver's seat or passenger seat if you're driving a European vehicle. And for a diesel, the engine is all the way back in the engine bay. So the way the two kits differ is that this live lead here is probably about an extra three meters long, so it can feed all the way under the vehicle and to the diesel battery at the back. So we have one live connection here that will connect at your battery. We have the bank of relays that are controlling the lives to your vehicle, uh, sorry, to your bulbs. We have an earth lead that will be connected behind this grill. And we have three headlamp connections here. This male headlamp socket will be plugging in to the existing headlight plug on this side of the vehicle. And then the female headlamp plug will be plugged into the back of the bulb itself. You then run the long multicolored lead here across the front of the vehicle. You remove the existing headlamp plug and replace it with this one. Now you may notice these two smaller leads and this is if you were to have a VWT3 with the dual headlamps or the square headlamps. You have this plug fits onto the outermost bulbs and the two plugs, uh, sorry, the live and the negative feed here will go onto the full beam inner headlamps. So they've covered all bases with this kit, diesel derivative, petrol derivative, and you can also fit this kit to vans with round headlamps or square, lamp, square headlamps. <laughs> so, <laughs> squared. Um, if all of that sounded a little bit complicated, don't worry, we are gonna be running through all the steps with you in just a second. The kit also comes with a full set of instructions. Now, in addition to the wiring loom, the kit that you buy from campervanculture.com does come with a pair of Osram Nightbreaker bulbs. The tools you're gonna to need to fit your wiring loom today are a drill with a two millimeter drill bit, a drill driver with a Phillips or Posi drive bit, a Phillips screwdriver, a large flathead screwdriver, some cable ties and some side cutters. The fitting of the kit is pretty simple. You've seen by the amount of tools that you're gonna to need today, but I'm still gonna go through it step by step with you. The first things we are gonna do is remove the front grille and the headlamp assemblies. Before you work on any part of a vehicle's electrics, it's very important for you to disconnect the battery. 
On this particular vehicle, a petrol T3, the battery is located under the driver's seat. If you have a diesel van, it's located in the engine bay. Don't forget to remove the negative terminal first. That's it then, we've removed the grill, now the headlamps, and as simple as that, we can start fitting our kit already. I'm gonna show you now how to actually fit the kit, and you'll be amazed at how simple it is. Um, we're starting here at the headlamp plug nearest the battery. So we know the battery is underneath the driver's seat, so we're gonna start here. The first plug to connect is the male plug that's supplied in the kit, and very simply, just plugs there. Now, this plug in particular is going to plug into the back of your headlamp. That's it. If you have a T3 with dual front headlamps or the dual front square lamps, then you will simply be connecting these two wires into that bulb. And they're all insulated, covered in heat shrink, so that you're not gonna to be touching anything. If you aren't gonna be using these, what we'll do, we'll just put these in a little loop and cable tie them up and keep them nicely tucked out of the way because if the owner of this fan in particular ever wants to change from round two square headlamps, they'll have the facility to right there. The next thing we're gonna talk about is locating these relays. Now, the reason I showed you that you will require a drill and a screwdriver earlier is because one of your options is to drill a small hole here and then using a screw, you can actually hold these relays up against this panel there. If you do not want to drill a hole into your vehicle, what we and this is what we are gonna do now, is clean this area here, and then we are going to use a self-adhesive tape to stick this relay to the metal of the van. We're gonna clean the area now, and for that we're gonna use some of these workshop hand wipes, or just general purpose wipes. We're gonna clean the main dirt off with that. That's pretty gipping. And then we're gonna be using a solvent-based a solvent -based cleaner, such as brake cleaner. Clean the area there. Give it a wipe, and that will not only clean all the greasy deposits left on that metal work, but it will dry the area out pretty nicely too. We're then gonna use our tape. First of all, we're gonna stick it to the back of the relays, and then we'll just peel off the backing and stick it to the metalwork of the van. We've now connected the male socket We've located and mounted where our relays are gonna go, and the last thing we're gonna do on this side is to mount this earth lead. Conveniently, where we've just removed our ballast resistor, the bracket that holds that ballast resistor is held down by a huge Phillips screw. So we're just gonna undo that, remove the ballast resistor bracket, and screw down our earth terminal at that point there. To give this earth lead the best chance of good connectivity, we're gonna clean up the areas of the screw and the metal work using a wire brush and some sandpaper. screwdriver a bit in the end of that screw then, but that is now tight, we've cleaned up the area, and uh, that's not going to go anywhere. If you are worried about that, you can obviously check the connectivity between this point of earth and a good known earth such as the negative battery terminal on the battery. We cover that in our installing a split charge video, and you can find the video right up there. So we've now dealt with the wiring and locating the relays there. 
before we feed our live cables through the bulkhead down towards our battery, we're just gonna route this cable over to the other side of the vehicle to plug into the passenger side headlamp. The existing wiring loom runs just across the front here, which is really, really nice and convenient. Um, we would have liked to have used the standard VW clips to locate that cable in, but there's just not enough room really. So um, we'll use our cable ties, secure the cable along the existing route, and then cut off the excess with our side cutters. Last thing to do up the front here then is to feed this cable through the van so it can go under the dash, under the cab mat, and then into the battery mounting location. Now it's gonna be a bit of a faff, so be warned, but there is an existing grommet here, and that is the grommet where your speedo cable fits through. Um, we are going to sacrifice the grommet just a little bit. We're gonna to have to make a slice in it so this cable fits through. But the biggest challenge we have first is to get all three of these few holders through that grommet. This is just on the petrol version. On a diesel version, you'll be routing this cable down underneath the van, safely cable tying the wiring loom along the route of the existing wiring loom towards the back of the van and connect it to the battery over there. We need to remove the fuses first of all so undo the fuse holders, remove each fuse one by one, and now we've got to have the faff of popping these through that grommet. So we're going to use our big flat bladed screwdriver, remove that grommet, put it out of the way and you can see there's quite a big hole up there but we've now got to manipulate this cable so all three of those fuses go in in a line. So the first one pops in, pop the cap in. Number two, with the cap. Then number three, with the cap. And there you go. It wasn't as bad as uh, I thought it would have been. Um, so when I say sacrifice this grommet, it's still going to retain its purpose as a rubber grommet, which means that it will prevent the metal chafing against um, the metal chafing against the wire. But we are going to make a slice in it and f leave this cable as close to the existing speedo cable as possible. Uh, I think the only thing is now we're going to take you through to the dashboard now and we're going to route the cable safely through the dashboard and down underneath the cab mat. The grommet that we've just fed that cable through is right down there on the dash. So for the purposes of the video, we're going to be removing this top cowling and show you where it's popping through on the inside of the dash. So I've been able to pop my hand up under the dash and I've actually, really luckily, located the cable straight away. Now I've just got to pull it through very, very slowly, just remembering that it's coming up through that grommet or the hole. And we have the lead here. Now I'm going to run the lead now behind this cross member down here. You'll know this cross member because it's probably got your um, vehicle information sticker. I'm then going to run the lead behind that, and then I'm going to run the lead underneath the cab mat. Okay, the cab mat's very easily removed. You just peel it away from the wall or removing it from its little locating nipples. We can lift it up and over the pedals and then move it to the center of the vehicle just to keep it out of the way. And what we're going to do then is route this cable as close to I'm going to call it the transmission tunnel as possible. So it's out the way of feet and resting your feet on the mats and everything else. We're going to use a silver foil back tape or P-clips to just secure that 
cable in the same place or in one place and we're then going to route the cable up into the battery box and straight onto the life terminal. We've now successfully routed our cable all the way to the battery. We've got no fuses in there yet because we haven't finished the installation but the cable has been routed underneath the spinning seat base. We've removed the seat just so you can see it a bit better. Um, the cable is going underneath the battery box. It's coming out just here. And now we're going to safely secure the cable all the way up to the dash using our cable tie clips. And they're a self-adhesive clip. You can stick them wherever you like, but before you do, make sure you clean and degrease the end. So once we've popped the headlights in and we're ready to test the whole loom and the circuit, the last thing to do is pop the fuses in. As you've just seen, we have rebuilt the entire front of this T4, completely tested the system, and we're super happy with how it works. I'm sure the owner is gonna be really, really happy as well, and they'll actually have some decent headlights to drive home with. If you like this kit, please take a look at the link below where you can see they're available from campervanculture.com. If you like this video, please check on these two videos here where you can see us doing other wiring antics and or how to build your campervan. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.